Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I've got a killer 1950s guitar to share with you. And this one only has a single pickup, so today we're gonna check it out and see how it sounds. So this is a 1956 Fender Esquire, and in my opinion, this is the greatest single pickup guitar ever made. Of course, I love a good 1950s Les Paul Jr., uh, but there's something about this design that just sounds incredible. And this specific guitar is really a spectacular example. It's got all the tone and, and look and feel that you would want in a vintage guitar. And today we're gonna to get into all the details on this one as well as the history behind the Fender Esquire. And I'll play it for you today through a couple of vintage Fender amps and we'll crank them up and see how it sounds. Uh, I don't think it will disappoint, but I wanna get right to it and play for you this bridge pickup here because it's pretty crazy how you can go from just a classic country twangy sound to really like the heaviest rock and roll tone you could ever want. So let's take a listen. Fender Esquire is actually quite interesting because this guitar was kind of Leo Fender's original idea for what would ultimately become the Fender Telecaster. And the very early prototype guitars came with a pine body, no truss rod in the neck, and what people would refer to as the snakehead headstock. Now these guitars were really kind of primitive and had some flaws in the design. So the guitar would evolve to basically what you see here in 1950, an ash body. They would add a truss rod for stability in the neck and then they would ultimately settle on this design for the headstock shape. Now throughout the 50s, this guitar would undergo a number of mostly cosmetic changes. Um, the black guard would turn into the white guard as you see here. And the finish changed from kind of a yellow butterscotch color to more of a, um, a white blonde color. Now this guitar is a very early 56. I believe it dates to January. So it's kind of a transitional model. It does have a circular string tree here, as you can see, like the Blackguard guitars. 
and it has the Blackguard logo placement, which I prefer. Um, it also has kind of a transitional pickup. The early guitars had flat pole pickups. Uh, this one does have raised pole pieces, but there's more to this pickup that's kind of interesting. And actually, uh, in the next video, I want to uh, take a look inside of this guitar. A lot of times um, I'll make video series where we can document the details inside, find the body date, neck date, take a look at the pot codes. Um, but also there's some other things written inside of this guitar that I've not seen before on a vintage Fender. So I think it'll be worth checking out in the next episode. Now, I have always wanted a Maple Neck Fender Esquire. I love the simplicity of these guitars, even though it does have a three-way switch here, which I'll talk about in just a bit. But a couple of my friends have Maple Neck Esquires and some of my heroes have played them. So it's always been on my bucket list to find one. However, these guitars are really coveted. Anything from the 1950s, uh, Fender or Gibson right now is super hot and uh, difficult to find to say the least. But uh, I always look for player grade stuff. You know, that's just what I'm into. I like to modify, I like to do my own repair work. And uh, this guitar um, is definitely a bit of a player grade one. And I think we'll find out more in the next episode. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's a killer instrument. It's got some beautiful blonde paint work going on here. Lots of checking and play wear. And of course, it's got the original finish on the neck with uh, lots of play wear on the fretboard and on the back of the neck as well. And this is just what I love about vintage guitars. It's really tough to replicate that. And uh, when they've been played in for almost 70 years, they, they have the greatest feel. So the three-way switch on a Fender Esquire, um, the forward position here, which would be your neck pickup position, but on this guitar, it's um, sort of a dark circuit. So there is a a uh, few capacitors and resistors in here that uh, give this position kind of a muted sound. Perhaps it replicates a bass tone or a rhythm tone in the 1950s. If you didn't have a bass player, you know, you could uh, put your switch in the forward position and suddenly you could play, you know, rhythm. Um, in the middle position, you have your volume and your tone. And uh, in the Back position here, the uh, tone is no longer operable and it's just a pickup straight to the volume pot. And that does have a different sound. It's very bright, um, but uh, it, it's pretty cool actually.
So despite uh, this guitar only having a single pickup, it is actually pretty versatile and uh, it does have some sounds in here that uh, a regular Telecaster would not have. And also, you know, depending on um, what your opinions are on this, some people think that a single pickup has different magnetic pull and all of that jazz, uh, and perhaps it sounds different without the neck pickup in place. I don't know if there's any way to quantify that, but this guitar does sound really good. So whatever that's worth. And I forgot to mention this guitar has a one piece ash body, which is somewhat unique. And also it only weighs about 6.5 pounds, which is why I had to jump on this one. Um, you know, typically these guitars will weigh seven to eight pounds, but there are some outliers that uh, are heavyweights. And this one happens to be on the lower end of the scale. So um, it's a great guitar, it's super lightweight, and it has a mean bridge pickup. So this is really one of the best Esquires I've ever come across. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank the amps up a little bit more and have some fun with this guitar. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did and you wanna support what I do here, just drop a comment, like the video, subscribe if you dig it. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. I'm gonna open this thing up and uh, we will document all of the date codes and, and try to narrow down exactly um, when this guitar was made since it is kind of a transitional model. And like I said, I think we'll find some surprises in here that are also pretty interesting. So I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for being here. Peace. Thank you.